Good evening, my brothers and sisters, as we welcome you once again to another study session with the Pilgrim Baptist Church family of Newark, Delaware. We greet all of you who have tuned in this evening to join us in our study of love for enemies. That particular text coming out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 27 through that of 36. We are truly grateful for God allowing us to come and examine and matriculate over these words. His word says, and, and, and those who will hear him, these are his children. We ask that you will continue to be prayerful towards the ministry that is going forth. We know that we now have been a long time in this pandemic. We realize that many are ready to come back in. We realize that some things now will look mundane. But I want us to keep our faith up. I want to keep our enthusiasm up. And I want you to understand something, those who are listening. We are reaching people all over the world. We have those all over who are listening to our broadcast, to our teaching, as well as to our preaching and we are thankful to God that he took us out of our comfort zone and he allowed us to step out on faith to do what we are doing so we welcome you this evening and we ask that you will continue pilgrim to support amen our church our ministry our effort our evangelism Amen. Our benevolence. Amen. Our almsgiving and our support of one another. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we are doing. But through the blessings and glory of God through you, we have not skipped a beat during the time of the pandemic. Matter of fact, we need you to continue doing what you're doing. Everybody counts. And we're leading up to our Men and Women's Day. Don't forget what we are required to do. Amen. So we ask that you join us now as we enter into our worship of study. Coming out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 27 through 36, love for enemies. Come join us in our study. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Once again... It's a joy to be able to come together to study uh, the Word of God. We are prayerful that all has been well with you and your family during this time. Going into another week of the pandemic, we ask your prayers for all of those who have newly contracted the virus. Even the President of the United States, we pray that God will protect he and his family as well. And we pray for all of those who have been going through uh, the trials and tribulations that have come with the virus. We pray for all of those who have gone through bereavement at this time. And we just lift up those who are in the hospital and those who are in nursing facilities. So we ask you to just join us this evening. I know that everyone is just eager to get back into our church, but just give God an opportunity to do what he needs to do, that we might do what we have to do. Let us stay safe. Let us continue social distancing. Let us continue to wear our mask and wash our hands and our clothes. We ask now that you join us in our lesson this evening. It is found in the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 27 through 36. Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 27 through 36. And it talks about love for enemies. 
These words are penned for our understanding this evening. Reading out of the New King James translations, these words are penned for our understanding. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the, on the, on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that access of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. If ye, if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Here in these verses, Jesus deals with a spiritual paradox that comes with the price of being a Christian. Here he puts a lot of emphasis on how to entreat those who are evil, those who are our enemies, those who really don't understand the God that we serve. Here in this, Jesus, amen, after uh, uh, speaking, this is his sermon on the plain, as they call it, dealing with those that are needy, dealing with those that are poor, dealing with, amen, those who have as they distribute to those who may have not. But he teaches us according to the golden rule. It is strange that down through the years there have been those who hated and despised people for no reason. There are those that you grew up with who just didn't like you, but you treated them kindly. You don't entreat evil for evil, but you have to entreat love with evil. You have to love people regardless according to the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Here, Jesus did not come seeking the righteous. But Jesus came for the sinner. He came for that person who was unthankful, had no gratitude, had no thought of praise, or even thanksgiving for the good that had been given them. But here in the text, he gives us directions. 
Christ's authority, amen, comes into play. Listen at how he words this. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Now we realize that there has been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We need to understand that Jesus is changing the scope of how we deal with those who don't care for us. Here he says, I say, he has now taken the authority to teach his followers, teach his disciples, teach those who came out of Judah and Jerusalem, out of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of him, that this is the golden rule. This is what God was trying to impart unto us, that we should love one another, not because of, but we should love in spite of. Let's look at something here. He says, love your enemies. Why would the Lord entreat us to love our enemies? Because he does not want us to fall beneath the dignity that God has elevated us to by being his children. Love, amen, the agape love, the unconditional love, love not because of, but we love in spite of. And he deals with the enemy. Why would he deal with the enemy? Because the enemy, amen, does not know the love of God. And the only way that some people will ever recognize the goodness of God is through we who are servants of God. If we don't promote love, if we don't promote understanding, if we don't promote charity, if we don't promote kindness, how would they ever know that we are God's children? So he says, do good to them which hate you. In other words, there will be times when your enemies will fall on hard times. So what the Lord is, is, is saying unto us, amen, is that whenever a person is on hard times, whenever a person is in need, that we should be loving, we should be giving, we should be supported because it could have been you and I. So he says, do good to them that hate you. Now, let, let, let's put a pin there because uh, this is one of the biggest problems because when he says do good to them which hate you, now that has to be, amen, intertwined with forgiveness. That has to be laying aside your differences in order to see the greater need. And he's saying here, do good to them that hate you. You got people who would not lift a finger for you. But when they fall on hard times, they need somebody who is sympathetic. They need somebody who is empathetic. They need somebody who is godly enough to step up and lend a helping hand, not looking for something in return. Look at what he says here. Those who really hate you. And you know you got some people that can't stand certain people. You got some people that just don't like them because they've been mistreated. But is that the godly way? Let's look and see what God says. He says, do good to them. Then he says in verse 28, he says, bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Why? Because nobody 
can curse you. Amen. As we said in the vernacular, people who are cussing folk out can't curse what God has already blessed. So God says, bless them that curse you. Bless them that say evil things about you, that take, amen, words out of the gutter towards you. Pray for them who despitefully use you. People say, well, I'm not going to be used. Well, sometimes we're used every day. Sometimes we can't help but to put the good of God before our own feelings. Knowing that these don't mean us any good, but because we are God's children, we step up to the plate and we will do good to those who will never say thank you. But God lets us know what our role is as his children. Yes, there'll be those that will curse you. There'll be those, amen, that will despitefully use you. But here, look at what God is saying. The true evidence of one being saved, one being a child of God, is to know that the battle that you are fighting is not yours, it is God. Now, look at this. You don't have to try to get back at somebody like that because the battle is not yours. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And only give God an opportunity to work things out on the other side when people are doing evil. Verse 29 says, And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. Well, your pastor had to really look at that particular scripture, amen, and come to find out that it does not necessarily mean smacking you around all the time, but sometimes it means with somebody trying to take advantage, somebody trying to use you, amen, and take advantage of you. So he is saying here, if someone actually smites you, then turn the other cheek. If somebody has done you wrong and you find that they are in need, he says, amen, turn the other cheek. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. So in other words, he says, don't try to get back at them because they have wronged you. All of us have had things stolen from us. All of us have had things taken from us. And we knew who did it. But yet and still, we said nothing. We went on about our business. And God is still in the blessing business. So what he is saying is, don't try to take matters in your own hands all the time. Don't try to bring them before the judges or, 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 or put them in jail for what they did because they don't understand who they are messing with. When you are God's child, God will cover you with his blessings and with his covering. God is able to supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. All of us have been mistreated. All of us have had wrong done unto us. All of us have had injustice done unto us. But yet you are still standing. Love your enemies is the only way <clears throat> that we will combat evil. Evil for evil will not work. It will make things worse. And verse 30 says, Give to every man that access of thee. Now, we want to take time 
just to break this down because here he is he is talking about those of charity those of need those who don't have those who uh, uh, needs amen a helping hand at that time when you see others that have a need they are destitute benevolence alms giving amen and benevolence is giving freely from what God has blessed you with. He's saying, give to every man that acts as of thee, especially when you know. Yes, be led by the Holy Spirit in your giving. Be led, amen, and not fooled by those who are playing, amen, and who are imposters to charity. But he says, when someone who is in a genuine need acts of thee, and you have it, he says, give. He says, give. Listen to this. He says, help them out the best way you can. I can remember growing up when there were needs in our community, and the community would come together and give towards that need. I can remember when the community came together to help people with their light bills or, or their bills that might have been due. I, I grew up with that. I grew up unified as a community who would reach out and help somebody else. Now we're living in a time when people can see folk going down, when people can see people who really need a helping hand and will not give. So he says, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not Again, so in other words, if someone steals from you, the Bible says, and this is what Jesus is saying, don't worry about replacing that because they didn't take everything you had. They just took something from you. And this is what he is saying. He is saying, don't even think about it. Let me put it in layman term. Uh, squash it. Let it ride. But then... We must concentrate and be vigilant in the fact that we don't have to draw back from helping these folk even when we know what they've done. Now, one of the things that I learned a long time ago, all of us got people that we know. All of us got some relatives. That you put stuff up when they come to your house. All of us got people we know still. All of us got people we know not going to do right. So when you know they're not going to do right, then you prepare for them not doing right. Amen. You take precautions on what is needed to be done. Verse 31. He says, and as ye would that men should do to you. Do ye also to them likewise. Now, I, I, I want to pause at this particular verse because sometimes I don't think that people understand that what you do to others, you are sowing what you are going to reap. How we treat other people is how we will be treated when the time comes for us. No man is an island. No man walks alone. We all need one another. And if we treat folk dirty, others will treat you dirty down the road. If we are not kind, if we do not pity certain situations, then when we are in need, there will be nobody there for us. So the Bible says, if you want to be treated rightly, then treat other folk rightly. If you don't want to be, 
amen, cussed out. Why are you cursing folk out? I come to bear record that here he says, as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. So if you want things to come your way, give, share, support, be benevolent. Alms giving is benevolent giving. It means that we are giving out of our resources. And God blesses us when we are able to help other people. These are those who are of neglect. These are those who may be homeless. These are those who may just need a helping hand at that time. And when you give, you give not looking for stuff to come back. When you give to people like that, why are you expecting them to repay you? God will repay you. Verse 32 says, For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? So in other words, the sinner loved those who love them. The sinner will give to those who give to them. The sinner gives, amen, just like the Christian gives. All of these things are done by those who don't know God. So he is, he is putting us, amen, on point. Now he is talking about the requirements of the spiritual life. And now he is letting us know what is true religion. What is truly being saved. For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? There's no struggle in loving those who love you. For the sinner also loved those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For the sinner also doeth the same. So what he is saying here, the sinner, amen, will back up the sinner. The sinner will do good to the sinner. Amen. Just like the saved will do good to the saved. Amen. But here he is saying there is a difference within the agape love of Christ. It's more than just doing good, my brothers and sisters. We have to learn how to shake stuff off. We have to learn how to allow, amen, hatred to be combated with the love of God. We have to stand not having anyone to bring us down from the level that God has elevated us to. I don't know about you, but I, I, I will and I refuse to go back. God has elevated us to another level and, and the devil always wants to bring us back. So therefore, if ye do good to them, which do good to you. Amen. That's all right. I mean, there ain't nothing wrong with that. But we give to them because we expect to receive from them. Look at verse number 34. Verse 34 it's a lot of us, amen, in the wrong way. It says, amen, and if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? Lend. Lend. One of the things that I learned early by being saved, and that is you lend what you don't need. You lend what you can do without. Not really expecting it back. And if it come back, amen, blessings to you. But when we give, realizing that we may not give it back, but we're giving freely from our heart, 
and by the Spirit of God that we might help somebody else, we find ourselves in a better way, in a better frame of mind. For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. All right, let's look at something. We have what we call out there now loan sharks. So now if you borrow from a loan shark, the loan shark is going to charge you 30% interest or more to pay the money back. Oh, but if you have a friend and that friend lends to you, what are we supposed to do as Christians? We should let the friend know what our situation is. We should do our best, but we should be earnest with folks. But when we give, we should not give with expectation. We should give knowing that God led us to help somebody who was down and out. So here, in verse 35, but love your enemies. I want to get back to that. Love your enemies. But love your enemies and do good. Lynn, listen to this, hoping for nothing again. So what the Lord is saying that when you give, you give what you are able to do without. Don't give, and you, 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 you remember how we used to lend money out before we learned, before we stopped being used and abused, before we, they stopped jipping us and stopped, stopped taking us for granted. Uh, they would say, I'll give it back to you on Friday. Friday is payday, and you still waiting on it. And you had a light bill to pay. You had a gas bill to pay. You had your mortgage to pay. And you told them what you had to do. See, the devil don't care about doing right. The devil don't care if you fall. The devil don't care if your lights get cut off as long as they'll stay on. So he says here, you learn. Learn to love your enemies and do good. Lend. Hoping for nothing again. In other words, give from your resources. Give not grudgingly. When you give and you help somebody, don't go behind their backs talking about them. You give on a personal basis. The Bible teaches us that those things that you do in secret, God will reward you openly. If you are helping somebody, you don't low rate them because they have been down. You don't besmirch their character. You don't let others know, oh, I did this. When you start doing that, you take away your blessings. Because someone is going to talk negative about you. He says, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. Listen to that. Your reward shall be great. Amen. Here we talk about the spiritual rewards that will come from God. God blesses us abundantly. God will take care of us. God does not just give us what we just need. He gives us more than what we need when he blesses us. He says, your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. See, others will see God operating in your lives. Enemies are put in our faces in in our presence so that God can operate through us to show others who he is how would they ever know God unless they can see the essence of God in us yes we put our hearts out there a lot yes we have done a whole lot for people and yet, 
We look for the gratitude coming from them. And the Bible says, and, 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 and I quote this, Jesus says, if you do things for the pat on the back, you've already received your reward. But if you do those things out of the love of God, out of the spirit of God, operating from the goodness of your heart, God shall reward you greatly. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd rather have God's reward than man's. I'd rather be able to tell folk how God has richly taken care of us rather than the world talking about love. Somebody asked me this week after finding out that uh, the president has the virus. He said, Pastor Rector, see there, I knew he was going to catch it. I said, well, what you going to do now that you know he caught it? He said, well, I've been praying for him, so I might as well keep praying for him. So that's what we have to do. We have to pray for our leaders, even when we don't agree with them, even when we know they are not Right, even when we know that they are lost and have no understanding of the goodness of God, we still must pray that God will heal. For we want someone to pray for us if we were down. So let us continue to pray for the leaders of this nation. For he is kind, listen to this, unto the unthankful, and to the evil. Jesus came seeking to save those that were lost. Jesus came seeking to save and bring to a godly awareness those who was even unthankful. Isn't it sad that we have many who are in church who are unthankful? Jesus was talking now to Judah, those out of Jerusalem, those out of Sidon, those out of Tyre. Jesus was speaking to people who were worshiping God ceremonially, but was not worshiping God with their hearts. They were going through the motion. And isn't it strange that we have those who are still superstitious? I come to church because I don't want nothing bad happen. Well, what are you going to do when something bad happens and you don't have faith? What's going to happen when you don't trust God through Jesus Christ fully? We come to church that we might grow closer to God. And here he is saying, for he is kind unto the unthankful. And there's a whole lot of people will take from God, but will never give anything back to God. Oh, brothers and sisters, look at what Jesus is saying here. Jesus says that he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. It rains on the just and the unjust. And the only way things are going to change is through the love of Almighty God. And he says in verse 36, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Oh, I want to put a pen right there. Because when we break down mercy, we are looking at trying to understand trying to remember that we were once in the mindset that they are. Sometimes we have been in the same situation, same position where some people are and we are not merciful. Sometimes we have to be sympathetic and empathetic to other people. We have to pity that they don't understand the God that we serve. And so he says, be merciful. In other words, God has been merciful to you and I. So he says, pay it forward. If God did it for us, he's expecting us to do the same with other people. Mercy 
amen, in, 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 in titles, amen, pity, mercy in titles, and not, not only mercy, but securing, bringing folk back into the fold, loving people who don't understand the true love of God. Restoring folk, amen. Restoring relationships, bringing relationships back into harmony. All of this is coming out of mercy. What if God was not merciful unto you and I? Oh, love for enemies. The only way we'll be able to change the mindset of those in this world is to show them Christ through our own walk, through our own lives. So the Lord here brings us back to the understanding that Jesus now takes the authority to say, I say unto you. He is now putting forth his Messiahship. He is now letting us know his sonship and the authority that he has from God. In giving us a directive as to what we should be doing as the children of God. Brothers and sisters, we're living in times now when love is greatly needed. We're living in times when positive thinking and positive words ought to be spoken. Not words to put down, not I told you so. Not carrying around hatred, but we have to carry around the love of God. Don't let hatred imprison you as a child of God. As a child of God, we are free when we forgive others. Oh, this is what he's saying. Mercy, amen, has forgiveness in it. Mercy has giving in it. Mercy has joy in it. All of these things is wrapped up in mercy. And the only way we are free from all the things that have uh, been perpetrated towards you and I is to forgive. Shake it off. Play like the duck. Shake it off. Amen. And allow the love of God, amen, to enhance your life. Every day. It's a day of thanksgiving. If it's a day of thanksgiving, don't let nobody steal your joy during the course of the day. Amen. Things will happen. If they happen, amen, don't you know it's only a test that God is not only trying your faith, testing your faith, but he's also growing your faith. He's allowing you to be used that others might come to know that he is God, so I stand here today, pilgrim, let's keep loving, pilgrim, let's keep praying for one another, don't think everybody is going to like you, and even those who grin in your face, some of them got ulterior motives, but surround yourself with people who care. Surround yourself with people who are looking out for your best interest. Surround yourself with prayer warriors. Surround yourself with those who are in the word. Surround yourself with those who don't mind praising God with you. Who don't mind taking the time to just speak with you along the way. So here he ends this thing by saying, be ye therefore merciful, merciful, understanding, having pity, having empathy, having sympathy, amen, for those who may not give it in return. For at one point, God was merciful and still is merciful to you and I. So whatever we sow, the Bible says, will reap. Don't you want good things to come? Don't you want the joy of the Lord in your heart? Don't you want peace? Oh, I just love him for what he has done. He has taught us how to walk tall. He has taught us how to stand the, 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 the winds and the, and the storms of time. And yet, 
when Satan has given us his best shot, we are still standing. So let's be merciful. Let's love. Let's love our enemies. Having the agape love of God. Not eros, not eros, not affilio, but agape. Let us treat our neighbors as thyselves. Oh, I thank you for being with us this, this evening for our study. For there are many who have not been happy, who have not been joyous, who have been bitter because of the pandemic, because of that situation. If God is still blessing you, you got a reason to praise him. You got a reason to love. You got a reason to hate. Hate does not belong in the Christian vocabulary. Do we get angry sometimes? Yes. But should we stay angry? No. There are times we got to let it go because the battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. If there's someone that is watching this evening, you may find yourself in the same situation. Know that God loves you where you are. Know that you can change. You don't have to let someone else imprison you. You don't have to let a situation imprison you. All you have to do is forgive. Forgive it. Give it to God. And be happy every day of your life. But if there's someone who is not saved, who do not understand, and you would like to become a child of the king, you are able to do that now. He has already paid the price in showing his love by dying on a cross, shedding his blood, being buried, and, and on the third day, rising again with all power in his hand. He's shown his love when he said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He has shown his love. And he came for the unbeliever. He came for the unthankful. He came for those who are sinners. Repeat after me. Father, I ask you into my life. I ask you to meet me where I am. I know that I am a sinner and I ask you to come in right now. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for my transgressions and sins. I believe that he was buried. But I believe that early on the third day morning he rose again having all power in his hand. I ask you now for forgiveness. I ask you to come into my life in Jesus' name. Amen. If you repeated these words, the Bible says you are now saved. The Spirit of the living God, if you said these words sincerely, has entered into you at this time. And he wants to start working it out for you. Read your Bible, study, stay in study, find you a Bible teaching church. Go as often as you will go. Amen. That you might give God glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for joining us this evening. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you uh, for your giving, and we ask that you will continue to support the ministry at Pilgrim. We need your help. We need to stay, amen, on the air that we might send this word out to people who may not even come into the church, but may find the Lord where they are. God bless you, and may heaven Continue to smile upon you. And remember, Pastor Rector loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Love your enemies and be blessed. 
Have a wonderful evening.